Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Now, the bodies of six hostages killed by Hamas in Gaza were recovered over the weekend. Thousands of Israelis took to the streets to protest the government's handling of that war against Hamas. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden tried to reassure the press that despite keeping a very, very low profile recently, he's still on top of the issue. Are you planning to present a final hostage deal for the, uh, both sides this week? We're very close to that. What makes you think that this deal will be successful in a way that the other deals were not? Hope things are turn out. Mr. President, if you think it's time for Prime Minister Netanyahu to do more on this issue, do you think he's doing enough? No. We've been hearing from the Biden administration for months now that they are close to a hostage negotiation deal. And obviously we're getting the runaround because you can't be close for that long and that many times and not deliver something and have any of those statements be true. Um, but more concerningly, Joe Biden has been mostly absent from the presidency since Kamala became the presumptive nominee for the Democratic Party. He was in Rehoboth Beach for a full week last week. There was what one photo of him sitting on the beach taking a phone call, and there was all of these Democratic strategists who had the gall to take that photo and say, look guys, see, he's working so hard. He's taking phone calls even when he's on the beach. Yeah, it's unbelievable. He has been totally absent, visually at least, for the last several weeks at this important time on the foreign policy stage, um, obviously the news, horrible that these hostages were killed, um, that there, it was not possible to get them back. Um, what the policy of the administration is with respect to Israel is so confusing at all times because on paper, at least, there's often a rhetorical commitment to stand with Israel and stand with the Netanyahu administration as it pursues a war understandably, against a terrorist organization that killed hundreds of its people and took them captive. Um, at the same time, um, this is a war that is now resulting in mass civilian casualties um, that the U.S. is partly funding in terms of its support for a foreign military government. Um, it's not just progressives, but also some people on the right and some many libertarians who wonder whether we're doing that region or any other region a lot of good when we're intervening with our dollars, whether American tax dollars should be spent in such manners, even if you do think the cause is justified. So these are all, I think, very valid questions to be asking. But wh you know, what does Biden actually think about it? And what does Harris think about it is, is the operative question because they'll say things like, well, we want a ceasefire now, but we're standing with and continuing to fund the government. Well, Netanyahu's taking the position that we can't have a ceasefire with a terrorist organization. They all have to be wiped out or they have to surrender. Again, which is a, that's a reasonable position to take after they took, they attacked you, but which is it? Those things are in some tension. And Biden has just been pretending all along, really, that they're on the same page. They're clearly not. Yes, I think the confusion is inseparable from the fact that Biden is essentially a figurehead at this point, because there's so many different players within the Biden administration who are grasping for power. That's how you get all of these contrary policy positions, particularly on the Israel question, because you have all of these hard left progressive activists in the Biden administration who are mostly at lower levels, yeah. who are actively lobbying for Biden to take a more aggressive pro-Palestinian position. And then you have people like John Kirby and some of the national security officials who are more of the traditional pro-Israel Democrats. And those two parts of the administration have been in conflict since essentially October 7th. And while you have this, you put it perfectly, rhetorical commitment to Israel, you also have the administration being very slow to condemn these anti-Semitic protests on college campuses. There was another one at Columbia just this week mm -hmm. where they got violent and uh, also currying the votes of the Arab American population in places like Michigan because they're worried that they're going to lose that part of the base. So the politics combined with the administrative issues and the personnel issues caused by Biden's absence at the top of the White House uh, in the Biden administration has caused some serious issues for them. And I really think um, progressives, poor progressives, people on the left were um, deluding themselves, honestly, into thinking that Kamala Harris was going to articulate some much more clearer, 
pro-Palestinian, pro-lasting peace sentiment um, in her remarks at the convention or that she was going to be a candidate more leaning in the direction. There was no indication or evidence to think that was going to be the case whatsoever. I think now they've been disabused of that notion that she is somehow, she's not distinct at all from Biden on, on this issue, which isn't surprising because she's been part of the administration. But they still don't seem to care because yeah. after the, or during the DNC rather, the, yeah. I guess it was the Arabs or Muslims for Kamala Harris group that said they could not support her in good conscience anymore because they didn't have a Palestinian speaking at the convention. And then two weeks later, they said, well, actually, this election is too important, so we are going to vote for Kamala Harris. And so these supposed single issue voters immediately right. caved on the one thing that is the most important to them, which I think is a helpful reminder to Republicans and conservatives that at the end of the day, the Democratic Party is always going to unite, even mm -hmm. if they disagree on some of these little issues. And that's especially salient uh, with the context of the infighting on the right this past week or two over the pro-life issue and whether Trump is sufficiently committed to ending abortion or uh, increasing abortion restrictions. Yeah. We're going to talk about that actually in just a minute. More free media coming up. Oh,